So to further expand on this, please welcome Mike Schreiner, leader of the Green Party of Ontario. Good morning. You know, it is possible for political parties to cooperate. And Michael, before you step out, I just want to tell a quick story. So the plowing match this year was near Kitchener in Michael's backyard, and it was a wet, sloppy day. And the Green Party had a green tractor that actually pulled the Liberal bus of MPPs out of the ditch. <laughs> and then lo and behold, Andrea Horvath and I were trudging through the mud to get in on our plow. And Michael came along with his tractor and we hopped on the conservative float and all made it out to where we were going to plow. So it is possible for all the parties at Queen's Party to work. Thank you for uh, being here today, Joanne. Thanks for, for the invitation. Um, I just want to take a moment to recognize and thank the Recycling Council of Ontario for the fantastic work you do and the leadership you've provided in helping us reduce and uh, divert recycle waste over 35 years. It's been a truly remarkable record of accomplishment. And I can tell you, personally that you touch our lives every day and I just want to compliment you on your waste free lunch program affectionately known as the literist literalist lunch in our household and I want to thank you for inviting me to be here at 945 instead of 845 this morning so I could rise to the occasion and put together a literalist lunch for my two daughters this morning so thank you for thinking of me <laughs> Uh, I, uh, before I get into some of our comments about our vision for moving towards a zero waste Ontario, I just want to talk a little bit about, and it was touched on briefly earlier, the essential economic role that you are playing in Ontario. I think we're all very well aware of the environmental role you're playing. I mean, all of us want to you know, reduce waste and we want to protect our local food sources and our water. Nobody wants a dump in their backyard. Nobody wants to live next to an incinerator. I mean, you're doing all of that environmental work. But the reality is, is to be economically successful in the 21st century, resource productivity, the efficient use of resources will be essential and that, I believe, is at the heart of the value proposition you're offering Ontario as we move forward. And it's not just coming from environmental organizations. You know, the McKinsey Global Institute, business management consulting firm, these aren't, these aren't populated by a bunch of tree huggers, have essentially said that the greatest economic challenge and opportunity the world faces right now is resource productivity. It's resource efficiency in the clean tech sectors. That's where the jobs of the 21st century are. You know, that economy globally right now is valued at $2.2 trillion. And by 2020, that's only seven years, it's gonna to double to $4.4 trillion. And the question is, is Ontario gonna be the global leader or are we gonna follow? and embracing the work you do and the work that you're promoting, as well as a whole host of other areas in reducing food waste and using energy more efficiently and water, et cetera, et cetera. That is what's gonna create the jobs of the 21st century in Ontario and make our businesses globally competitive. And so I just wanna emphasize the essential economic role your work is playing in this province. Moving forward, I think the good news is, is that the people of Ontario have embraced the work that you do. I mean, the Blue Box program is incredibly successful. The Bottle Return program with Brewers Retail is incredibly successful. And so it's clear to me that if you design programs with the proper incentives that are easy for people to use, they will embrace it and they will use it. Unfortunately, the bad news is, is that if we have over the last 
two decades, really, failed to fully put together a policy framework that enables Ontario to reach its diversion targets. And we've heard about that failure today, so I won't get into it. But in particular, I think we have to address the commercial, industrial, and institutional sectors, which produce over 60% of the waste in this province. And we have failed to even touch the tip of the iceberg on that one. And so the Green Party's concern is that Ontario does not have an adequate policy framework in place to deliver on the challenges and to offer the solutions that we need. And I'm gonna tell you about five areas of concern that I have that I feel we have to fix. The first is that the Waste Diversion Act does not prioritize the need to reduce waste in the first place over even reuse and recycle. The second is that Ontario has a flawed cost structure that makes landfill less expensive than reducing and recycling. And it's too bad my colleague here, uh, who's looking for the complete privatization of waste diversion in the province, isn't here. Because if that's going to work, we have to have the courage to have the right financial incentives in place for full cost accounting if the marketplace is going to be a major player in solving our waste issues. Third, our waste diversion programs fail to cover all costs, and that's simply unacceptable. Fourth, there is little or no financial incentives to reduce waste or not produce waste in the first place. And the fifth is that there's inadequate coverage of materials and sectors under the Waste Diversion Act. So my New Year's resolution for 2013 is that we need a new and improved Waste Diversion Act in Ontario. That is my resolution. And I think the first and most important step in improving the Waste Diversion Act is that we have to shift our focus and what it has been historically, which is how do we deal with waste? That's been our focus. To a new focus for the 21st century, which is how do we reduce waste in the first place? That has to be our guiding framework as we reform the Waste Diversion Act. And you know what? I will give the government credit. You know what? Opposition parties sometimes give the government credit. And I will give the government credit for a couple reports. I think the Towards a Zero Waste Future report that came out in 2008 was an excellent document. It, that paper embraced the Green Party's longtime call for extended producer responsibility, and it also promoted the design of products and processes to reduce waste before it was produced. That was a huge step in the right direction. And I know you had a role to play in that, so thank you. <laughs> and a year later, the ministry came out with their Waste Diversion Act review, From Waste to Worth, which really embraced the Green Party's long-time vision for a zero-waste future. Unfortunately, both of those reports and the reforms that they promote are currently in limbo. And they've especially been in limbo since the eco-fee disaster of July of 2010. And I think now, if I could have a second New Year's resolution for 2013, it would be we need less talk and more action in moving forward. We know what most of the solutions are. We just need action in implementing them. And so Ontario needs, and especially if our businesses are going to embrace that clean tech future, Ontario needs a long-term stable policy framework in place so that businesses and municipalities and nonprofit organizations can make the investments we need to embrace that zero waste future. And we have to make those investments today. We can't ask business to come to the table if there's an unstable policy framework because the capital risk is too high and we have to fix that. Greens believe that a zero waste future is possible. We have places like the town of Markham that are already moving in that direction. 
We believe that the focus has to be re on reducing waste by having full extended producer responsibility. That is the most cost effective and financially responsible approach. Without full cost accounting, the proper incentives to reduce waste simply aren't there. And I believe that we all have a shared responsibility in reducing waste. That Ontario cannot continue to ask municipal property taxpayers to shoulder the burden of waste reduction and management in this province. That it has to be shifted on to the people who produce and generate that waste in the first place. I don't think the fees structure for that should be at the consumer end. It should be back at the beginning of the supply chain so we create the incentives that entrepreneurs and businesses need to redesign products and packaging in ways that take into account the full life cycle costs and reduce the amount of waste in the first place and produce the kinds of products that fully utilize repair and reuse and reutilization. And if Ontario is going to meet our waste reduction targets, that's going to be the way we have to go. Because the bottom line is, is that extended producer responsibility across a, the full range of products and services in our province is the only way, I believe, that will create the market incentives needed for the private sector to deliver on waste reduction targets. In addition, and this came out of where you have to have the proper cost structure in place. And this really for me came out of the conversations around the Aggregate Resources Act review. That in Ontario, we recycle 7% of our aggregates and in the UK, it's over 26%. And you sort of ask yourself, well, wh why is that? Well, there's a couple things. One is, is we only charge 11.5 cents per ton extracted. In the UK, it's over $2. So already there's a built-in incentive to use the resource efficiently in the first place because of the cost structure. And then secondly, they charge a landfill rate far in excess of anything that Ontario has ever contemplated. And so there is a built-in incentive to keep that construction waste out of landfill and to reuse it and recycle it. And until we have the political leadership that has the courage to have that conversation with the public, we will not achieve the waste diversion and recycling and reduction targets that we want. And so I believe and this, I guess, would be my final New Year's resolution as a challenge to this organization, is that I believe you play an essential role in educating the public about what it's going to take to move us forward on this issue. And I believe we need an honest and open and transparent conversation about where the real cost burden of waste is, which is on property taxpayers, and the fact that landfill fees, eco fees, whatever you want to call them, that is really about shifting the tax burden off of you as a municipal property taxpayer and putting it onto industry so that the marketplace can actually begin to work properly to reduce and divert waste. And so my resolution to you is a promise that I'm happy to work with you in partnership in the role of educating and engaging the public in those conversations because I believe they're essential to moving us forward in terms of environmental sustainability, the health of our communities, reducing waste, but also preparing Ontario to seize the economic opportunities in the resource efficient and clean tech global economy that will be the emerging and most job creating sector of the 21st century. So thank you. I'm happy to answer questions.
You're welcome to help me make lunch tomorrow morning if you'd like. <laughs> Thank you, Audrey.